for some of you, like me, deliveries aren't an no, option. And people, we could be getting people Lama live, to the door. Yeah, people who live in very remote areas. Um, like so Reed Willem. Reed, Reed Willem, Willem Village, Village in Pembrokeshire. Yes. Uh, lots of the roads around there, very difficult to access unless you know, you've got a four by four vehicle. But our next guest, Matt York, has found a very eco friendly solution. Oh, and he joins us look now. At that. Along Matt, Matt's with, the well, one on the right. He's the one on the right of your picture. OK, <laughs> look at that. And Matt, you're joined. Tell us the name of your friend, Matt. Hello there. This is Matt Smith. Matt the short. Uh, now, look at Matt. Now, I'm having this debate with Ruth. <laughs> I'm just waiting for Max to spit. Does, Stop Max, it. does Max spit? No, he's he's pretty good usually. Um, maybe when um, when when there's another llama sniffing around his bum, potentially he might uh, he might take. I understand that's but, fair yeah. enough. <laughs> but it, Max, it must be it, it must be an amazing thing, Matt, when you come with a delivery and you've got groceries on the back of the llama, and someone opens the door. What's the reaction <laughs> like? Um, yeah, it's, they're they're pretty surprised. Um, obviously, it's not every day um, you see a llama on your doorstep. So um, it's, it's been really positive for most people, I think. So tell us about the people you're delivering to, Matt, and why, why you and, and your fiancé, Alex, came up with this idea. Um, well, we, um, we're, we're quite a small um, valley here. Um, we're probably the, the youngest people in the valley. Um, when, when lockdown started, we, we, we thought, you know, what do we do? Um, we've got all these people, they're, they're very proud and independent, but um, obviously going out to the shops, um, we didn't want... We didn't like the idea of them putting themselves at risk, so we started offering to um, to pick up shopping for them yeah. uh, when we were doing our own shopping. So um, that, that's what we did. They gave us a list, uh, and we were dropping it down to them. But the roads around here aren't great. Um, it was playing havoc with the suspension on my car. <laughs> so we thought, well, we've got these llamas, you know, yeah. sitting around, not doing must, much of them. Yeah, we, we've got to explain to people, because you actually run a llama trekking centre, don't you? So you've got Max and his friends, ten, ten all together. So the llamas were there anyway, and you said they're used to walking. So actually, this is something that they'll enjoy. Like exercise. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Um, so we were you know, completely shut down. Um, when this all started, we do treks, and people come, come and stay on the farm. Uh, so these guys were sitting around, really um, enjoying life in the field. So we, you know, it's good to get them out on the roads. Um, it gives them a bit more stimulation. It's good for their toenails because obviously their nails grow. You've got to trim them if they are hard surfaces. Yeah. So the road surface keeps the nails down. So, so it's Max, less work for. Max, tell me that. Or Matt, tell me this. <laughs> I keep getting Max, getting and, Max and Matt. And Matt. I'm sure he's used there. to that. Matt, tell, tell me this. What is the reaction when people open that door? I mean, how do they? How how thankful are they? I mean, they must be a bit aghast sometimes. Uh, yeah, well, you know, it's it, they, everyone around here is um, sort of aware of the llamas anyway. Um, so they, it's just a, it's just a nice surprise, really. It's just just something that's brightening up people's days and hopefully giving them a bit of variety in their day. And you know, obviously at the moment, any kind of um, joy you can bring to people's lives is a good thing. Tell us a bit about Max. He looks quite a character. What's he eating, by the way? Is he chewing gum? He's he's chewing. Um, Hey, I think he's. It's probably hay he's eaten earlier. He's. It's gone down into his stomach. It's come back up, and he's. He's given it a second chew. Nice. Just to make sure. It's <laughs> nice. <round. laughs> uh, and and tell 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 me this, uh, Matt. Is is a llama? Is it related to a camel? They are. Yeah. Uh, so they're all part of the uh, the camelid family. So there's camels. There's llamas. <laughs> alpacas. Um, there's guanacos and vicunas. They're the uh, the wild varieties of um, alpacas and llamas. And how many llamas are there in the UK? Because I realise um, you're also responsible for rehoming if some of them find themselves in, in need of a new home. And I wouldn't have thought, oh, how cute is that? No, I wouldn't have thought that there was much of a demand for that. But obviously there, there is. Is there a big llama community? Um, sorry, we're sitting down now. We're going to sit down. Um, so um, I, I don't know actually how many llamas there are in the country. It's difficult to tell because... Um, I, um, I do some work for the British Llama Society, and obviously um, all the llamas with British Llama Society are registered, but then there's a, there's a big uh, population of unregistered llamas out there. So it's, it's difficult to put a figure on it. Um, it's a lot less than alpacas, we know that. So there's a lot, a lot less llamas for whatever reason. Um, uh, I, I wouldn't like to guess. I, I'd be way out, and somebody on the internet would tell me how wrong I was, so I'm not going to guess. But do you, mean, do you mean, Matt, that people have, you know, bought one as a pet and then realised, actually, this is quite difficult to look after, and then they're looking for a rescue centre or, or a rehoming centre? Uh, yes, yeah, so as, as far as the rehoming goes, um, you know, it could be for any reason. So, you know, people, you know, life never goes as planned, and so... Um, 
so you know you might find that you know financial reasons or health reasons it can be for whatever reason um, they find that they can't look after their llamas anymore so um, they, they get in touch with me and I, I try and um, find a new home um, the, the, the aim really with our charity is to bring you know to offer any llama in need a, a home here yeah. um, well, and then work with other charities um, you know with, with sort of special needs groups and um, retirement homes um, youth vendors etc and make these animals accessible to them well, listen, it's obviously getting a bit windy there in Pembrokeshire. Um, uh, Max doesn't look like he needs rescuing anytime soon. He looks absolutely adorable. He's obviously loves you. He's just sitting there, very content. Yeah. yeah. He's a bit of a cap pro, unlike me. <laughs> well, well done. Thanks for talking to us, and uh, good luck with what you're doing. And Lovely. certainly different, certainly innovative. Oh, he looks as if he's going to yeah. give you a kiss now, so, so he does. Uh, thank you, Matt, and thank you, Max. Appreciate it. Thank you. See you. Thank you, time. Good to Bye. Bye.